Destiny never had this issue because they didn't have sideboards. <laughs> yeah. In Netrunner, I remember open deck list was annoying. Netrunner also didn't have sideboards, but it did have open deck list after a point, I think. And that was annoying because there was substantial value to surprises in Netrunner. Um, like to the point where you would play some cards face down. Dante says, I don't see almost any card game get to that cutthroat way that Magic the Gathering was. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I've heard some crazy stories about people cheating in Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments and stuff, but like, um, I don't know. I, I think ideally you end up in a situation where people are um, are more relaxed, but hard to say. All right, and Bazine is the open for Jason. Oh, there is a single opening play in this hand. It is a Viper Probe Droid. Is Jason going to take it? I might not even be as concerned by that as like by one of these space units. Maybe he wants to get rid of that phantom. He, he was picking up the phantom. Yeah. The phantom is notably immune to some of his counters. I think he, I think he's making notes there of what cards he's seen in hand. That's a good practice to do if you have an effect that allows you to see your opponent's hand. You're allowed to take notes in this game, and it can be worth noting the cards that you saw. Now, to be fair, some of those cards might end up getting resourced, so it's it's hard to tell exactly what it is, but you can still be like, okay, yeah, I've seen this. I've seen that. And yeah, he takes the Phantom. Yep, that makes sense. I probably would have done that. Maybe I would have gone for 7th Fleet, depending on, on what my hand was. But uh, yeah, I think, I think that makes sense here. You can deal with a, a Viper. Not as worried about blanking the opening play. Let's see what we got here. Ooh. The Viper reveals a... Oh yeah, and there's a super laser tech in hand, which to me is another reason why you wouldn't want to take the Viper because you want your opponent on the ground. Looks like Derek is stopping to see what that commission is. Definitely a, a slightly more unorthodox card. I don't know if it's as spicy as disarm, but uh, you know, a little <laughs> less usual. Yeah. Did he draw to replace? Yeah, he did. He did. Yep. Ray Bami asks, "How many lurking phantoms does he mean deck?" All three. He's going big on lurking, uh, lurking tie phantom. So what do you do with this Viper? Do you do you take out Bazine or do you just go for the face? Um, I think having seen the hand, I think I go face. Yeah. The, the only reason you would kill the Bazine is if you're worried about McClunky, but you saw he didn't right. have it. And maybe he drew it, but I think the odds of that are low. It is also worth noting that... Um, Boba Yellow is the uh, is the aggro here. He is the beat down. Yep. Jason probably going to be playing that super laser tech. Yeah, exactly there right. It is. And the viper goes to base. We're predicting it well. Not that it's the uh, most complicated turn in the world to predict, but you know. Now it's time to see what Derek's next play is. We know he does have that. We know he does have that seventh fleet defender in hand from the previous turn, plus whatever else he may have drawn. Did he pass? No. Uh, Jason hit base with uh, Bazine, and then Derek played. No, did Derek pass? No, Derek played uh, seventh foot here. Okay, what am I missing? I thought that I thought Derek swung with Viper. Oh no, Jason yeah, had the yeah. initiative. Okay, that, that yeah yeah there we go. I, I thought the initiative was the other way around. Okay, so sorry about that, guys. Got a little absent-minded there. All right, seventh fleet defender is a nice one to have. Annoying to deal with. Overwhelming barrage isn't good against it. 
Yeah, Jason's going to be going up to five this turn, which means he can flip his boba early. Yep, that's a good point. That is a situation where you would want to have some kind of bounce available. He does, Derek does play Waylay, but he either didn't have it or didn't opt to use it there on that uh, on that super laser tech. And he does play No Good to Me Dead as well, but similarly didn't go for it. Waylaying the tech would have been kind of spicy. I think I, I think I would have liked to see that play. If I'm Derek, yeah, I wouldn't maybe. like to see it if I'm Jason. Uh, but I mean, that just delays it and it's still going to come down. I guess I'll give it prevents yeah, you from. Yeah, but if it comes down later, it doesn't really matter. The, the, the core issue is getting that leader out sooner. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think you also need to be pushing damage to the base. So that's a fair point. Yeah, developing your board more, getting more more threats on the table. And the Phantom isn't too worried about Boba coming out early thanks to that shield. Even if we see an OB this turn, it doesn't really matter. Ooh, and there's a no good to me dead for Boba. Yep. Might be more valuable than playing it last turn anyway, even if he did have it in his previous hand. Also, I said Phantom. That card is a defender. I had Phantoms on the mind after the earlier uh, Bazine, Bazine discussion. Whatever. Looks like Jason's going to match Derek's defender with a defender of his own. One problem with this No Good to Me Dead is that it left him on two resources. If he has another three, he can't play it. But he has another two. It's a crafty smuggler. Yeah. That's Classic set one card. That's interesting, yeah. If I'm Jason, I probably want to send Bazine in to take out this shield, I think. Ooh, armor. Uh, Yeah, I think that's a pretty good play. Boba's armor for Jason. Yep, very strong card. He won't be able to use it next turn because he'll be exhausted, but it does mean that he now threatens a one-hit kill via overwhelming barrage uh, if and when Derek deploys his, re his Boba Fett. A barrage for eight would actually be quite spicy. Uh, it could defeat Boba and deal one damage to knock the shield off that seventh fleet defender. So Derek is not in a super comfy spot, even with his opponent's Boba exhausted via no good to me dead. All right. What have we here? Now, I mean, this is the turn where Derek can flip his Boba, but yep. Jason's already got the, the armor established on his own. Although it is still exhausted from that. No good to be dead. Uh, if Jason has like a barrage, that could be massive. Yeah. The threat, of, the threat of that barrage is huge here for Derek. He can't really deploy Boba safely at this point unless Jason spends some resources. On the other hand, Derek does have a few units in play and can take actions just attacking and so on for a bit. Yep. Yep. Enticing reward. Wow. Enticing reward on the on the smuggler. The non-unique smuggler. Yeah, it does mean it's going to be a weaker form of enticing reward, but it notably only uses one resource, which means five is still floating for barrage. Yep. If I'm Derek, I'd probably just swing base with the Seventh Fleet Defender here. Uh, Probably. Jason's going to be able to outstall him, though. Jason also has two units here. I wonder if it would have been better for Derek to use his crafty smuggler to take out Bazine just for the um just for the tempo situation. Uh there's I mean, yeah, there's an argument for that, but I don't think that does enough. I think he's still losing on, on tempo here. But yeah, Jason maybe. is going also to Jason play something can just pass. Here. Oh, it's gonna be it's a boss. 
Honestly, if I'm Derek, I'm happy to see this. Losing yeah. a crafty smuggler is like kind of whatever. And now there's no threat of barrage. You can get your boba in place safely. The question, well, you know, safe being a relative term when your opponent has boba's armor on the field and so on, but. You know what I want to see if I'm Derek? Boba's armor of my own. Yep. <laughs> That would be big. Not exactly a thrilling revelation of something really outside the norm. Boba's armor is a good card to see when you're playing Boba. That Boba gets uh, one hit in with the armor. That brings Jason up to 17, and then if he gets another one next round, that's 23. That plus the seventh fleet that's on board is 26, plus a fire spray is 31. So. Uh, armor would be huge here. Boba's armor, pretty good. What does he have in hand there? It looks like fire. Uh, Fire spray and Greedo, so I don't think it's an armor. I uh, yeah, I think he has fire spray, Greedo, and maybe a third card that I can't tell. Presumably you've got to deploy Boma here and just swing, right? Uh yeah, you're not gonna get a better chance, I think. Misty Mountain Games says, a fundamental issue for me. I don't understand how Yellow Boba should beat Green Boba. Green Boba seems like a deck that should be strong against tempo plays, and its late game plays are so strong. Rubame says, when Green played ECL, it was more in Yellow's favor. Now that they go with 30 HP, I agree it seems like such a hard matchup. Ooh, I mean, That was the third card. That's a big one. That's a, that's a good card to have. But what is he doing with it? He doesn't get to do like a mass exhaust or something. Uh, probably like buff and then maybe discard, maybe bounce the seventh fleet. Yeah. Yeah. So he could buff himself, bounce the opponent's seventh fleet. Boba gets to swing for eight. And then the seventh fleet is uncontested for, for potential extra damage. And he knows he has the fire spray coming. No, he goes for the random discard instead. Yep. With two cards in hand, that makes a lot of sense. McClunky. Okay. Knocks out McClunky. That's a well, that's actually a pretty big one. The seventh Yeah, it's pretty relevant with right that now. Bazine there. I don't know. I do like the idea of a bounce here. I think you need to be buffing here. Yeah, sure. I agree. I, I think I think the question is less about the buff and more like what's the thing that you do that isn't the buff. Yeah. Okay, so now the one damage from Bazine means that if they an overwhelming barrage here would kill both. Actually, it would kill both even without the one damage from Bazine because Bosk is on the field. Yeah. Imagine if he randomly discarded an OB from his opponent's hand, how happy he would be. Yeah, that would be big. Now, to be fair, we don't even know if Jason has an OB. In fact, I think there's a good chance he doesn't, given the way he played that round. Yeah, with the Bosk. Yeah. If he if he did have it, he just won a, uh, a fateful 50-50. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's see how this goes. A barrage here would be huge, though. I think it would actually wipe the board completely. Thanks to the extra two damage from Bosk, he could do this. He could do six damage to Bobo, one damage to Greedo. Uh, one damage to the defender, and then still have one uh, two damage from Bosk to finish it off. Yep.
Ah, and there it is. Oh. There it is. Big setback for Derek. Game's not over, but it's a big setback. I suspect what Derek wants to do now is hit the fire spray and just try and push damage through. If he can get a swing and then a surprise strike with the fire spray, that's game. Yeah. If I recall correctly, Jason is not running the uh is not running the reinforcement walker, which would otherwise provide a potential out for this sort of situation. Yeah, no, he's not. He is running Slacious Crumb. Ooh, he has Greedo the top deck lands, but this strike. card's a surprise strike. Yeah. I'd maybe rather have surprise strike in my hand. In fact, I'd almost certainly rather have surprise strike in my hand. Yep. Oh, he's got the second fire spray in hand. Oh, that is spicy though. That is spicy. The thing about Greedo's top deck, though, is that imagine a situation where he, instead of discarding the surprise strike, he discarded some other random card that now yeah. means that he's going to draw the surprise strike. So you, you can't get you can't get too results oriented with that one. You know, you got you got to think about what it does in the expectation. All right. Well, if Derek does have another surprise strike, he can win the game in one action at this point. So that's that's kind of nice. Yeah. If you're Jason, do you just claim here? Let's see. What's the clock? Six, seven, eight. The nine. clock is you lose immediately if he has surprise strike or shoot first. Well, but can you stop that if he does? Ah, uh, that's a good point. Uh, oh, yeah, because he doesn't have waylay and no good to me dead. That's right. Yeah. So I, I think he might just be dead to that. He's got... So, so okay, so in that case, what do you do? Do you, like, crash your defender into fire spray to soften it up? Uh, well, let's see. He's got 13 on board. I think I just go to base with everything. He's got, or is that going to be enough? Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, because he can hit like three more, then it's 16, so then it would be 14 damage left. And he... W oh, he's actually one short of... Yeah, he's slightly the, off. To win next round. Uh, Maybe he's got like a DL44 in the resource row, and that'll help him out. Mm, yeah, hot shot. I can see that. But if Jason has Jason's lethal, it'll take him three actions because he has to attack with everything. Derek is going to also have three actions lethal. So no, he he has lethal, but off by one unless he has that uh, unless he has that hot shot or whatever. Well, but he is so he goes fire spray attack, play second fire spray attack with that. That's three actions lethal. Oh no! I, I, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I was mixed up. I thought you were talking about Jason. Well, I mean, Jason would have that. Yeah, he has attack with Boba. With the uh, DL44 that we're pretending that he has, attack with Bosk, attack with Super Laser, or with some. Oh wow! Smuggling a commission. Okay. The co firing off the commission means that he does get to deal two damage to uh, Fed's fire. Maybe he is trying to remove it. Yeah. If he has a McClunky, he can just ki he can kill here, right? Because he can bounce uh, bounce Bosk three damage plus two damage. Yeah. Does he have the resources for that? I think that might be his. Last resources that he spent there. Yeah, maybe. I, I I think the pile in bottom left is maybe his hand. Yeah. So this uh this commission card is interesting. It's not a super widely played card. Um, it's an event that costs one. You get to search your top ten cards for a bounty hunter item or transport card. Additionally, it actually has smuggle and can be smuggled out for three. Looks like he's pulling Bosk, another copy of Bosk into the hand. Uh, ooh, DL44 is a as a, an item, I was going to say. So he could have pulled that if he had seen it. That would be a much more exciting pull, in my opinion, because it would confirm. On the other hand, if he already had it, he probably wouldn't want to pull it because it would show it to the opponent. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
And if you only need one, why pull a second one? He is on the L44s, right? Let me double check. <laughs> Jason is, yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh oh no, he's not. He's not? Yeah. Oh no, I'm sorry, yeah. Derek Brian is, is Jason Brian has both uh or no no. Derek has so Brian, the player that we were observing earlier, had the DL forty four. Jason does not have it. Derek has both the DL forty four and Surprise Strike. Yeah. Oh, but there's the defender going for the base. So maybe not maybe not trying to pick this off as fast as possible. Does he have a sh oh there's a shoot first? It's game over. Yeah. He may not have surprise strike, but shoot first is good enough. And that's that it. That is the game. Derek. The uh, you know, shoot first can be played in a pinch for that plus one damage to base, and that's what uh that's what Derek needed, and that's what Derek got. That was a relatively long game. Took about 25 minutes. But the time is extended here, so I don't think it's going to be a factor. Yeah, if if they play all three games at that pace, they'll they'll make it. it. It would end up being like the last game. Maybe like time gets called in the turn where it's clear that one player or the other is going to win. You know? Yeah. Going space seems like Derek's key against Jason. And uh, someone in chat, I'm going to mispronounce this, Fontaine's Julio, my apologies for my horrible pronunciation, but uh, was saying that yellow's favorite if played right. Uh, based on going for a space tactic and trying to avoid ground. One other advantage of avoiding ground is that it can prevent super laser technician from going off. Sometimes you do get these situations where someone brings out super laser tech only to find their opponent doesn't have a ground unit in time for them to get a good ramp. That being said, that's somewhat mitigated these days because Salacious Crumb can use his bounce ability to ping your own super laser tech and kill it in a situation where your opponent doesn't give you a ground target. Ashley Tyndall asks, sorry if it's been asked already, but is there a deck list for this game at all? Uh, we do have the deck lists here as commentators, but I don't think they've been publicly posted yet. Yeah, no. Hopefully they will be after the event's over. Uh, I'll do my best to make sure that happens. <laughs> but uh, I guess we can talk a bit about uh, their sideboard choices. So, I mean, Jason's got... He's got some stuff for control decks here, which I don't think he's going to bring in. He's got confiscates, which probably are going to come in to help with the opposing Boba's armors. Yeah, I think I think recruit? confiscate. I think confiscate sees the field for sure here. Uh, Syndicate lackeys and bounty hunter crew, maybe. Uh, I think sure Syndicate lackeys is probably a like anti Sabine play there. Go for yeah. the because you can pick off Cassian and you can pick off Sabine leader when she flips. Yep. Uh, the bounty hunter I don't crew? know I what don't the know bounty hunter is for, honestly. Yeah. Uh, on Derek's side, he's got he's got a lot of anti-aggro stuff in his board. Yeah. A new adventure is like is an interesting card. It can kind of be used against upgrades. It can be used to allow for double attacks with Fed's fire spray. That's probably its scariest use. Yeah. No good to me dead seems very likely to come in the third copy. It's I think it's really important in this matchup. It's a good answer to Fett's fire spray for cheap, and it's a good answer to Boba himself. He gets tooled up. I think you're right. I wonder if we see Gamorian guards. It could potentially be good in this it. matchup. Maybe. They're really bad into Bosk though. They are. That's true.
All right, they're figuring it all out. Levi Ponce says, not having Wele or No Good to Me dead really hurts Jason in this matchup. Yeah, I agree. You know, honestly, I think it hurts him in a lot of matchups. I think, like, I know some people are only playing one of those two in main deck or whatever, but I think having neither of them can be pretty brutal. But, you know, he got this far, and he may get further still. We'll have to see. I don't think Wele is all that important in this matchup. No good to me, Dad is great, but Wele, uh, I mean, what are you Weleying? Wele is more important for Derek than it is for Jason, honestly. I think yeah, the, the I prospect think so. of Weleying the super laser tech is big. But Wele, I think, is pretty important against Sabine because it's really good against wing leaders and it's really good against K2. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. Now what? Someone's showing off their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles phone wallpaper or something. Yeah. I think that's what that is. Not sure if it's relevant to the game. Yeah, he's been like, he's been putting that on the table the whole time. I think it's an advertisement or something. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> Levi says, Waylay still helps to answer the plus four on cunning buffs. That is true. Yeah. Uh, but if it's on the Boba leader, then it doesn't help with that. True. True that. Fallback Kid asks, what's the top eight? We had three Sabine Greens, a Sabine Yellow, uh, a Boba Green, a Boba Yellow, a Boba Red, and a Han Green. The top four now is these two Boba decks and two Sabine Greens. And the two Sabine Greens are in a mirror match, so we're going to have a Sabine Green versus some variety of Boba in the finals. Uh, I've if not seen Sabine, any updates on the other top four game for those asking. If you're a Sabine player, are you rooting for uh, you're rooting for Der for Derek here or Jason? I think you're probably rooting for Jason. Uh, probably, yeah. I think I would rather play against Jason's deck with Sabine than uh, Derek's, but could be wrong. Oh, I just heard the uh, the outcome of the the other top four match right after I said there were no updates. Uh, and Loopy won. So Loopy hey. will make the final with Sabine Green. To play Congratulations to Loopy. Let's go. We will see him in the finals. We saw him. Uh, we saw him take down a uh, take down the Han deck that had posed some problems for Sabine earlier. And now we may see him uh, take on Boba. Uh, people are saying that the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles thing is a game that Jason helped design. Oh, cool. It's like a Kickstarter game. That's cool. Turtle power. They have taken a bit of time, but it looks like we're going to be starting game two shortly. One thing that I think might be underrated is that this this time counts. This is like on the clock. Being able to like to sideboard and shuffle up fast and so on can buy you some extra time for decision making. Yeah. All right, Salacious Merc Crumb. Gunship. And is, did Jason just spend another resource? Yeah, it looks like he is. Probably. McClunky time? Oh, commission. Okay. No, commission. Oh, that's a lot less hype for Jason than McClunky here, I have to say. I think commission is pretty good here. Yeah, yeah but you'd, like. You'd probably rather I would, McClunky. But. I, yeah, I would so much rather reset my, my opponent's board and get your resource back and play, play Salacious Crumb again. That'd be so good. Yeah. Bob 
Bosk. All right. Bosk. Good pickup. Okay. They'll have Bosk for later. Bosk can be a quite relevant guard. Bosk, interesting also as a card that's kind of gone in and out of fashion at different times. Yeah. Some people, some people not on him. Some people are big fans. I think he does get better if you run some of the small utility events like, uh, like, uh, what's that card? It's not confiscate. Well, confiscate does actually work with Bosk for one yeah. thing, but, um, commission is the one that I'm thinking of. Yeah. The one that they just played. It can find Bosk and it can help Bosk do some damage. Yeah. And we got resupply. So that's Bobo's something coming that Jason's out early. probably happy to see. Ooh, Toro Calcan. We didn't see him at all last game. But Derek is, is a now potentially man. Potentially a very strong card, although. I don't know. To me, it seems like he's not arriving with the best timing because right now, Salacious Crumb can deal one damage, jump back to hand, and set the stage for an ambush next turn with Boss taking out Toro. Yeah. Derek readying a resource from his opponent using Salacious Crumb. Uh, for those of you in chat, yeah, Ryan Warner, uh, Rebel Resource, was playing Sabine Yellow, ended up losing in top eight. So the, the top four game was a, a Sabine Green Mirror. It was against someone named Ryan, but uh, <laughs> not Ryan Warner. That's a shame. I think it, I think Sabine Yellow would have been would have been exciting to see here. Yeah. The question is, does Derek have something to do with that one resource? I mean, what would he? Even, I, I think like Greedo would be his only real play here. Yeah. I guess technically it doesn't do it. Well, we'll see how this one goes. I will say that like playing Bosk last game, playing Bosk here would have the advantage for Abderic of not being overwhelming Barrage and allowing him to act more freely with the rest of his turn. Yeah. Uh, but the big—I mean—the big difference here is that we're on five and not five and four, and not six and five, because Derek's Boba can't flip here. Good point. Now, what are we? Uh... What are we thinking here? I think that boss ambush comes out pretty fast, personally. You, yeah. you want to get rid of Toro before he can pose a big problem. Yeah, I think so. But Derek has the initiative here, it looks like. So, so if mean, you're Derek, do you, do you, if you have a hot shot, do you do you throw a hot shot on Toro so that he'll take down Bosk with him? Uh, I think there's an argument for that. But you might also it's want to save to your hot shot. <laughs> it depends yeah. on what other plays you have. Because, I mean, Hotshot now is basically all of your resources for the round, except one. Well, I guess you might get yeah. another one back from Boba, so maybe you have a two that you can play also. All right, looks like he's just going to go to base here. Taking his time here. What's going on here? All right, Bosk. There's Bosk. Ambushing Toro. As expected. Ooh, surprise strike. Just to deal with Oh, six. man. I think it's a little early for a surprise strike, if you ask me. I mean, yeah, but it depends on what other plays he has. That's true. It might just be that's the best he can do. But in the ideal situation, I think cards like Surprise Strike or For a Cause I Believe In are used as closers. And earlier on, you do stuff that like develops your board more and creates threats that your opponent has to deal with. Yeah. 
It's like coffee in that regard for closers. <laughs> Salacious Crumb hits the field again, and Derek throws out a, oh man, Viper Probe Droid sees what is not a hand that I think Derek's excited about. Boba's armor and overwhelming barrage. Yeah, that's, that's pretty rough. So Boba's going to flip here. Uh... Yeah, the Toro died this turn, so Boba's online, which means that armor is going to come down. Yep, armor is probably going to be equipped, and then that's a huge threat with the barrage, able to defeat Boba immediately. Well, I mean, it would be anyway, thanks to Bosk. I don't know. This is looking, this is looking pretty grim for Derek. It's not over yet, but I think we could be headed for game three here. Yeah. Okay, there's that armor. This is pretty much going as expected, but it, it's taken a little while to get there. And there's another surprise strike. All right. Okay, what is happening here? Bosk swings into base. Uh, I think... Oh, Bodhi. That's going to clear the barrage. That's big. <laughs> so now Derek's Boba can flip without... Uh... Uh, without fear of being barraged. Which means he's going to get at least one hit in. One Although, hit can be the difference between life and death. Yeah. Although a hit from Boba plus a ping from this crumb it can finish him off. All right, he's going to go bounce the crumb. One damage to Boba. Boba is Boba into the base, base for now. four. So that brings Jason up to 21. He can go back down to 20 if he plays this crumb again this round. Yep, that's a good point. That little incremental healing from Salacious Crumb can be quite annoying for the opponent sometimes. I think Bodhi was the real big play, though. Yeah. Let's see. Does Jason have four resources up? I think he does, which means he has enough to buy off the uh, the mercenary gunship here. Ooh, there's a thought.
not a thought one often hears, but in this situation, you could be right. Buying mercenary gunship from your opponent is sometimes really strong. It's not like consistently really strong. There are a lot of cases where the person with the mercenary gunship has more resources or like buying it would mean you can't play some other thing that's more important. But when you have that opportunity, there are some circumstances where it can be a big swing in your favor. Yeah. Misty Mountain Games says, always steal the gunship. All right. Ooh, that's a, that's a pretty good hits off that enticing reward. McClunky and a commission. Oh, Jason's got all of his resources ready. So he can play commission. I think he's got a Greedo and a McClunky in hand. He can play one of those. And he can still... Uh, still buy this gunship. So... Oh, he needs the Bosk also. So Bosk is going to do here. Two here. And then... With McClunky, that can finish off Boba. And then okay. if he buys the gunship, then Derek's left with a completely empty field. And Jason's got four big units with a fire spray on the way now. Jason's taking over. And he isn't low enough for a single fire spray swing to doom him either. Yeah. And there we go. He buys the gunship. Here we go. Now looking at 20 damage on Jason's base and only four on Derek's base, but Jason has the only units on the board. Cunning. All right. Looks like he's going to bounce back his own gunship and exhaust the other two units. It feels bad not being able to use the buff here, but I think he had to do it to stay in this game. What do we have here? Is that fire spray? Yep. And it's met with a no good. No good to me dead was used. Salacious Crumb getting in some little healing. And Derek still with no units on board. Can't feel good. Not, not where you want to be. I think we might be headed for game three here. Yeah. And time is might actually start to become an issue. They've now taken about 25 minutes on both games. And there's about 25 minutes left. Yeah, and this game is not concluded. Like, Jason has a, has a huge board advantage, but it's not over. And as you say, they're starting to uh, starting to get pretty long on time here. Or rather, they're starting to go long and get short on time. 
Someone go back and check what the what um what Jason's health was at last game or Derek's health. Because that could be relevant for tiebreakers. Derek, uh, not in a great spot. Brings up Forlom. Finally deals with the annoying uh, Salacious Crumb there, but that's not exactly the hypest thing in the world. Especially now with Bosk and Vader poised there to easily kill Forlom if Jason wants to. And he can't be setting up as Zuckus because he doesn't have the resources to play both of them. I guess he could be setting up a later turn Zuckus, but I don't think Forlom's going to stick around too long. Is it help during the two games? Yes, it is. Uh, if if you go into time on game three and there's no winner determined, the winner is Er. Is that the rule? I'm not sure, but I'm, I, I know at some point there's a tiebreaker that is whoever had the most health remaining in the game that they won wins. But that might yeah, only be not- if you win game two within the two rounds after they call time and the game three one might be different. I'm not sure. Not necessarily my favorite tiebreaker system. Greedo. Jason is, uh, I think he's trying to maintain his resources available to answer another threat. I just don't know what it would even be at this point with only three resources left for Derek. I gotta look up what the rule is now. <laughs> Derek plays a crafty smuggler. Nice shielded unit. Okay. They are taking their time. They have the right to do that. It is the finals and there's extra or it's not the finals, but it's the top cut and there's extra time for a reason. But uh, these these have been unusually long games. Yeah. Hey, I found the the paragraph during a top cut round. Well, he says time... game three tiebreakers. Whoever won their game by a better score, basically. But yeah, not great. But that's the tiebreak. That's an argument in favor of keeping notes on a pad. So during a top cut round, if time is called and players are tied for number of games won, the winner of match is determined in different ways based on which game the players are in. If the players are in game one or game three when the time is called, the winner of the match is the person with the most remaining health on their base after the final action phase. Um, if both players have the same amount of health on their base, the player with the initiative wins. If time is called during game two and the final action phase results in both players having each won one game, the winner of the match is the player who had the most health remaining on their base in the game that they won. This rule also applies if time is called between games two and three or before the setup of game three is complete. All right, yeah. So if they actually go to game three, which it seems like is likely they will, it'll be... The previous games won't matter. It'll just matter. Misty Mountain Game says one v one tiebreaker. Whoever had fewest slow play warnings, <laughs> <laughs> that would be a spicy tiebreaker. That's unfortunately quite subjective. So yeah, it's but most if it health- really gets to be an issue. Bring out the chess clock. Oh, Let's go.
bounty hunter crew ambushing that crafty smuggler and bringing back an overwhelming barrage. That is nasty. All right, I guess we were wondering what that card was for. I guess now we know. <laughs> Even more overwhelming barrages. And, you know, overwhelming barrage is a very good card. It can't can't really fault Jason for wanting to play more of them. I don't know if it's the most efficient thing in the world, but uh, I like his situation a lot more with a barrage in hand to potentially shoot down a, uh, a fire spray or whatever. And I think, did Derek scoop? Uh, that seems likely to me. Yeah, it, it seems to me that Derek has scooped. And so we're going to be going on to the final match. Let's see if they can play it in time. There have been some... There have been some things here. They should be able to finish a game in 20 minutes, plus however much extra time you get if it's not done. That should be that should be quite achievable, if you ask me. Rebel Resource is saying that Jason said he was on three hours of sleep. Ouch. Oof. Pretty good performance for three hours of sleep, Jason, not going to lie. Hasn't lost a match yet, it looks like. While they do their uh, while they do their mulligans and resourcing and stuff, I'm gonna grab a quick drink. I will be right back. All right, sounds good. All right. It all comes down to this. <laughs> the battle for the master of the Bobas. If it does come down to time, remember it's uh, whoever has the most health remaining at the end of the allotted time. Are, are we seeing some mulligans here? What's going on here? Looks like it. All right, one and one. The pressure is on. Whoever wins this mat, this game, will win the match and go on to play Loopy and his Sabine in the finals here at the uh, Pastimes Comics and Games Planetary Qualifier in Chicago. And the winner of that match will get a bunch of cool prizes and additionally will get to skip the first day of Galactic Championships, playing a special side event, and uh, just cruise in for day two, which is, in my opinion, a pretty sweet prize. Yeah. Dante says, logistically, that would be a nightmare. Either you need 64 or 128 or more chess clocks on hand, or you have different top cut versus Swiss behaviors. Neither is good. So yeah, I do think I do think the logistics are an issue, but I but I will point out the time rules are already different in the top cut than they are in Swiss. So I don't think it would be that crazy to have to have a different system that way. And yeah, it, it wouldn't work in Magic because there's too many timing intervals unless you unless you're doing it with a online client. And I think MTG Arena and Magic Online have chess clocks for chess clock like features. Okay, so we're seeing a Salacious Crumb a uh, from Jason, a Crafty Smuggler from Derek, and then Jason throws the enticing reward onto that crafty smuggler not as hype when it is on a non-unique unit i'll tell you that much yeah and bodhi that's big oh <laughs> bodhi oh bodhi misses double boss gonna super laser 
That's, I mean, that's a pretty Not good hand. Not what you want to see. He was probably hoping to blast a resupply or something, but he did not see it. And we're going to see that super laser tech hit the board. It's going to be another game where Jason manages to successfully ramp. They do have uh, Misty Mountain games. They do have chess clocks on phones, but there's other issues with that. Um, and Neil was pointing out when I interviewed him, uh, when I interviewed him the other day that you know, ideally you don't actually have your phone out during a game or use it because there's a risk of outside information and so on. Now, I will say I've also played in tournaments where people have totally used like life counter apps and stuff like that and had their phone on the table and nobody cares. So I don't know. Salacious Crumb bounces back to hand from Jason to knock out the shield on that crafty smuggler and set up for a scenario where that Super laser tech can... Oh, but there's the waylay in hand. I think if I'm Derek, I am going for that waylay on that super laser tech. What do you think, Rebel? Uh, maybe. I mean, in this scenario, it seems pretty good. Having seen the hand, it's double bosk. Uh, you know the super laser is going to kill your crafty and get the enticement road trigger. I think it might just be too good here. Yeah, there we go. Waylaying the super laser tech and getting a resource back with Boba. He denies Jason that ramp opportunity that would have allowed him to bring Boba out this turn. Jason replays the super laser tech. I'm not entirely sure why. It seems like it's a little late at this point, but he might not have something else that good to do with it. He may have been banking on it. Yeah, all he does is recreate his board from earlier. Now, playing Salacious Crumb does heal him for one. Derek throws some damage on the base there. Up to six damage on Jason's base, but, you know, still 24 to go. Does Derek... Oh, Derek has another two-cost card. Jason takes the initiative and Ooh. Derek plays a mercenary gunship. This was a big turn for Derek, I feel. Yeah. Can he keep that momentum to get this win and move on to the finals? Jason? Yeah, one spicy situation is that if your opponent steals your mercenary gunship and you play a new adventure on it, it comes back to play under your control because it says yeah. owner. Yeah. We well, uh, can see that happen. That could happen right here in this match. <laughs> it could, yeah. Uh, if if Derek brought those in. But Jason yeah, has the I think they're to, sideboard. Yeah, yeah. Jason has the initiative here, which means he can kill this crafty and get the um get another card out of the enticing reward. That's true. He could send his super laser tech into the crafty smuggler trade there, get a sixth resource. Not that that's amazing. And then uh, fire off the enticing reward, allowing him to get another card. But I don't know. I mean, it's it's something. But going from five to six is a lot worse than going from four to five, in my opinion. The the ramp allowing you to deploy your leader faster is a lot more valuable much of the time than ramp that just moves you closer to end game cards or whatever and yeah. i don't know i mean it does mean that he's going to be able to get vader out sooner get maul out sooner those those are totally real things those are very powerful cards but getting boba out sooner as your leader who you don't have to pay for is just massive But if Jason can get to like a fire spray this turn and clear some uh, Derek space units, that could be big. Yeah. Yeah, send a fire spray in again and clear that Merc gunship. It could happen. Oh, there's Boba's armor off the enticing reward. 
as well as another enticing reward, but he has to send something back. Yeah. Dante says, yeah, getting Boba out a turn earlier or to match Sabine is way better than Maul on six. Yeah. And Derek flips his boba. And Jason is looking like he's going to get his Salacious on a dodge. Salacious Crumb bouncing back to hand and dealing one damage to Derek's copy of Boba Fett. Uh, Caleb says, doesn't Jason need to discard off enticing? Yeah, he should. Did he not do that? He has it Salacious Crumb in discard. Did he discard that? I don't know. I'm not sure what happened there. Wait, did he swing a Salacious Crumb into Boba instead of bouncing? What's the upside to that? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think there's anything that he could pull out of the discard with boss ambushes kills uh kills Bodhi rook derek brings out a phantom Dante says, I think he bounced and then discarded Crumb. Okay. I don't know how the timing works out on that, but it's possible I missed it. Yeah. Is Derek finally going to see a Boba's armor? We've seen Jason have Boba Boba's armor a bunch, and Derek hasn't had it much at all. Oh, here. Yes. okay, here's what it was. He discarded Salacious Crumb and then, and then, because he actually had two copies of it. So now he's bringing out the one that he bounced earlier. I think that's what's happening here. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Derek shuffles his cards back and forth, thinking about his next move. Seven minutes left in time. Jason's trailing by eight here. Another enticing reward on Boba Fett this time. Derek's Boba is actually suppressing Jason's Boba here because of the threat of a surprise strike. Yeah. But uh, Derek has to use it potentially use it or potentially lose it here either he attacks or the brown may end did he pass it sure seems to me like maybe he passed and now jason is maybe going to deploy into it and we'll see what happens i'm not sure They are taking their time, though. Jason claims. So I think I think what's happening here is Derek. Um, I think what's happening here is Derek. Uh, Derek was passing to threaten to kill his opponent's Boba, given that he had seen Derek had seen the Boba Fett's armor that Jason got with that enticing reward. And he was I he either had a surprise strike or was bluffing a surprise strike 
and Jason opted to take the initiative rather than uh, risk deploying his boba and getting killed. All right. And Jason's going to open by stealing the gunship here. He opens with a gunship steal. And Derek steals Derek it right back. back. Very interesting. Uh, Ryan W. asked, did Derek miss an action after the super laser tech killed Crafty because the very next action was boss ambush? I believe the super laser tech killed Crafty, then Derek immediately deployed Boba, and then there was the boss ambush. But I think Derek was trying to get his Boba out first in order to potentially pin his opponent's Boba with the threat of surprise strike. Yeah. Okay, so what happened after the gunship steal? It looks like uh, looks like good old Salacious Crumb bounced back to the hand for Jason, dealing one more damage to Derek's boba, and then Derek swings with the uh, swings with the Merc gunship. Then Salacious Crumb is replayed for yet another heal. He's he's healed for like three or four this game now. Four more damage to Jason's base from the lurking TIE Phantom, though. The Space Arena is starting to be a problem for Jason. McClunky. McClunky is going to be able to kill Boba here. He can do three damage yep. with the McClunky and then two with Bosk. That is big. That is real big. And that means that Derek does not get to get the two resources from swinging with Boba after Salacious Crumb left play. Yep. And uh, Jason's not going to have to discard to the enticing this time. Good point. Boba Fett is unique. If I'm Jason, I'm looking for commission here to kill that gunship off with Bosk. Mm, good point. You're not you're not even as interested in the in commission. Uh, it looks like he pulled him a clunky, maybe. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean that does it. That, that also lets him get a kill. What's in hand there for Derek? I can't tell. Not, man, missing your attack with Boba is rough here. I think attacking with Boba was maybe higher priority than attacking with that Phantom. I, I get that Boba was pinning the opposing Boba, but with a Bosk on the board, I don't know. Going for base or going to kill Bosk both seem like they would be very reasonable plays to me, at least. Takes the initiative. Forward to base. Now he's going to get his gunship stolen, I think. I think yep, so. There we yep. go. He's got to hope he has that a new adventure. I don't even know if it's sighted in. It would be pretty sweet here. But because Jason got to uh because Jason got to ready those resources with Boba and Derek didn't, the uh, gunship steal now puts Derek in a very awkward position. All right, we got two minutes left in time. Jason's trailing by six, but he's got a pretty solid board advantage here. What is uh, this? And our timer is probably is not 100% accurate. It's it's close, but it, it might be off by a little bit. Base eats a surprise strike for seven damage, 21. I think Jason has the advantage here, but there is there is a real weakness. There is a chance that he gets overwhelmed. What is he doing? What is he doing? I'm not sure. This is not the pace of play that I would want with this amount of time left in the game. I'll tell you that. Yeah, J Jabba King Tad asks, dang, who did Loopy beat in top four? Who or what? Yeah, and yeah, Dante replies, he beat another Sabine mirror. Yeah, it was Green Sabine versus Green Sabine. Bazine comes out, gets to see the hand. What is that? Is that another surprise strike? Another surprise strike, a TIE Phantom, and another gunship. The gunship yeah. is risky to play here. I think if you take anything, you probably take Surprise Strike. It looks like he's going to take the Phantom. Okay. I think that, I think that's reasonable. I think that would be I think that would be what I go for, honestly. 
Because the Phantom, so like right now, Jason can use that Merc gunship to kill the Phantom. And yep. then Derek could replay another Phantom and have another threat that would be annoying for Jason to deal with with his weak space presence. Derek paying for something, rethinking it. He's not exactly playing at the fastest pace ever himself. All right, let's go to the tournament document and look up what the freaking tiebreaker rules are going to be. I, I looked it up I, earlier. It's it's whoever has the most health remaining on their base at the end of this game. At the end uh, of and, this game? Yep, and if that's tied, it's whoever has initiative. I thought there was the tiebreaker on like who had the most health in the game that they won or whatever before this. That's if you call it in... Um, if you call it at the end of game two or like between game two and three. Hmm. Okay. What, what happened there? There was a cunning. Oh, yep. that's spicy. Cunning double exhaust and bounce the Merc gunship and it bounces back to Derek's hand, not to Jason's. Yeah. Do they get extra turns? Yeah, they should get two extra turns here. It's finished the current action phase and then one more, I think. So probably one extra yeah. turn. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, one more beyond this. Let's see here. And that cunning might be the game. All right. Let's see. During Swiss rounds, if blah, blah, blah. Okay. We're not. In, okay. Top cut. Yeah, if the play, the winner of the match is the person with the most remaining health on their base after the final action phase. Okay, yeah, so that that's very much in Derek's favor. I don't think I've ever actually seen time seen time get called on a top cut before. I think this is the first time I've ever seen it. Yeah. But, you know, first time for everything. Loopy getting an extra long break with his uh with his Sabine mirror having been done in like 20 minutes or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Ryan says that's the exact danger of discarding with Bazine, having given him the cunning card. Yeah, I think cunning ended up being significantly better than playing that Thai Phantom would have been. Yep. Boba's armor, I think. Yep, that is an armor. And, and Derek replays the Merc gunship. Does Jason have the resources to buy it? I don't know. No, he, he only has two up. You, you wouldn't replay it if you could just buy it. Oh, he's playing an enticing reward here. That's now, the, third the funny one. thing about this enticing reward is that if he steals it, that if he steals this Merc gunship and Derek kills it, the enticing reward goes to Derek. But Jason has a way to immediately kill it with McClunky, and now the enticing reward does go off for Jason. And Boss gets to hit the Tie Phantom for two, but the Tie Phantom's ability blanks that. You know, we were talking about the three X Tie Phantom being spicy for Derek, but it's really paying off here. Oh, yeah. So Dante says it happened at the first Florida 5K. I think that a top cut game went to time. Um, I think I that would I think if I recall correctly, that was before they extended the time in the top cut, though. Because this and, is going to time with the like extended period. Yeah, and I, I don't know that they I don't I don't think they had officially those top cut rules. I think they ended up using something along the lines of the ones we have now, but I don't think it was official at that time. I remember there being controversy about it. Yeah, because they because they've got to time now for with a seventy five minute round.
And uh, Salacious Crumb replayed yet again for another heal. Someone should keep track of how much Salacious Crumb is healed throughout the course of this game. It has to be like five or six or something. Really yeah. a lot of value out of that guy. Okay, so let's look at damage on board. So Jason has... 12 damage on board, so we could get Derek to 20. But Derek can swing for 4 and potentially more because he has that surprise strike. There's the surprise strike, hits for 7. So Derek could plausibly actually win the game by normal means here if he has a Feth Fire Spray in hand. Yeah. Um, and he's very favored, I think, when this round goes to time. I don't know. I, may, you know, maybe Jason ha has some moves of his own, but I think Jason's in trouble here. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, Jason can do 12, but if he does all 12, he can't bounce Salacious. If he doesn't attack with Salacious, he does 11, and then he gets to heal one, but that's effectively the same as attacking. Are we, are we seeing six resources here for a Fed Spire Spray? He's counting his resources is what he's doing, apparently. Did he pass? Did he take initiative? What is he it doing? It looks like he passed, yeah. And Salacious is going to bounce himself, dealing one to the Boba. Okay. That lets him replay it to heal one, which is like, okay. It's it's effectively the same as attacking. Oh, he's got Boba's armor on the Bazine. What? Now Bazine can hit for three. If I'm has, not seeing how this math adds up for Jason, though. If he has Fire Spray and then he plays the Salacious back, that gets him there. If he has enough resources. But, oh, and he has he does. it. Does Derek have anything to deal with this? What if Derek has Waylay or No Good to Me dead, though? Derek has potential answers in his build. I think that would be the game. I think he's been passing here. Does he have anything that's relevant? Seventh Fleet? Nope, Seventh Fleet, totally irrelevant. And Salacious Crumb for game. Wow, yeah, Salacious, Salacious ends up winning wins, it. Salacious Crumb wins the game with all those heals. Thanks to, wait, no, does he win or does he tie? Are they tied now? Uh, no, it should be 25, 26. Maybe he just didn't change it because they, because they like shook hands and it was game over. Yeah. 